Hello and welcome to CV8 Speaks, the television show of Community Board 8. My name is David Liston and I am so pleased to host this episode. Community Board 8 serves, as many of you know, the Upper East Side from 59th Street to 96th Street, from Roosevelt Island over to Central Park, over 220,000 people. Uh, I've served as chair of the board. Uh, I'm now co-chair of the Health, Seniors, and Social Services Committee. And I'm also very happy to be a member of the Communications Committee of the board, which is why I'm here today with our guest, Will Brightbill. Will, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. For those of you familiar with Community Board 8, Will needs no introduction. If you've been to a meeting of our board at any time over the last few years, you've had the pleasure of seeing and listening to Will. Uh, Will, as you will hear shortly, served as senior advisor to council member Dan Gorodnik, and in that capacity, uh, spoke often to our board and with our board and worked with us. We are so very excited now to have him as our newly appointed district manager. Congratulations, Will. Thank you. Thank you. I had the privilege of serving on the search committee, and we interviewed many candidates Many tremendously qualified people with the best of intentions sought this position, but you stood out. And we're so very happy and honored to have you as our district manager. I'm so pleased to be here. <laughs> well, good. Why don't you start out um, by telling us a little bit about, now that you've been on the job for a few weeks, what does a district manager do? Help our viewers understand what your job involves. I serve as the uh, paid staff uh, for the volunteer board of Community Board 8. Uh, the board is made up of 50 individuals who volunteer their time to advise the city on a number of issues from street life and liquor licenses to transportation and land use. But at the end of the day, they go back home and they go to their jobs, and, but the city needs to be notified of, of what they've chosen to do and, and their stance and the community's stance. So they turn the, the work over to me and to my staff, and we help carry out the, the work of the board and serve as an advocate to the city and to, uh, for the community as well. Can you tell us, Will, a little bit about your background, your academic background, your work experience, your life experience, the yeah. things that led to you being who you are and being here today? I grew up on a farm in uh, West Texas, in the panhandle of Texas. Uh, my father is a farmer. Uh, my mother is a public school teacher. I went to uh, Hardin Simmons University outside of Dallas. It's a private school, um, studied political science and history, uh, double minored in business and Spanish. Um, and while I was studying abroad in Spain, I was accepted into NYU. I uh, went to NYU for a master's in European politics and policy, uh, which I'm currently using so well in the east side of Manhattan. <laughs> Worked for a legislator in Texas who was very thoughtful, uh, always tried to hear both sides of the, the issue. And uh, my passion was always in government, and I continued working in government here in New York after I finished grad school with Dan Grodnick, very similar type of legislator, thoughtful, uh, always wanting to hear uh, every, every aspect of, an, of a complex issue before he made a decision. And that was sort of a style of governance that I really appreciated, so I stayed with him, uh, rose from a community assistant to, uh, to senior advisor, and handled uh, his budget, his intern program and all of his uh, affairs in the Upper East Side. I was his main spokesman to the Upper East Side and Community Board 8 for the last four years. What drew you to live and work here in New York City, Will? Funny enough, I'd actually never been to New York when I accepted my spot at NYU and uh, had been living in London before and thought, well, how different could it be? Um, turns out very. Uh, I, I think E.B. White phrased it well, if you'll let me paraphrase him, sure. that there, there's a number of New Yorks. There's the New York of the person who grew up here. There's the New York of the commuter who comes in every day. And then there's the New York of the of the settler, the, the person who comes here seeking the experience of New York. And E.B. said that uh, that New York was the, the best New York uh, in, a, in a way, that that fed into the, the atmosphere that creates New York, the, the culture, the art, the, the passion. And so I, I came to New York uh, with a passion to improve the world around me and maybe the naiveness that I could. But, uh, you know, I, I came to experience New York and, you know, the culture is much better here than on a farm, I guess, in Texas. Oh, is but, that right? But the, the food, you know, uh, we haven't nailed Tex-Mex yet. We so, haven't? No. My wife, who's from Texas, yeah. would agree with everything you've just said. 
from the fact that the best New Yorkers are the folks who come from someplace else and yeah. bring their energy and their spirit here. Uh, I, and, and, and as to the food, I'm quite sure she and many other people would agree with you when it comes to Tex-Mex. Tex-Mex and Texas barbecue as well. Yeah. Now, Council Member Gorodnik is, of course, uh, a council member who, during his time as a council member, represented a very large, significant portion of our district. Um, I had the privilege of being chair of the board right around the time that he became elected for his first term, and I worked closely with him, and he, or he worked closely with our board. Yeah. I can only imagine that the work you did with Council Member Gorodnik was both challenging and rewarding. When you look back on that experience, can you share with us what was the most challenging and what was the most rewarding? It was such a pleasure to learn from Dan. He was a very thoughtful, uh, smart, um, incredible human being who uh, I, I'm just so lucky to have, have had that chance. Uh, the, the most rewarding things were always helping the constituents who needed to navigate the city's bureaucracy, who were facing eviction or what have you, to, to restore someone's faith in government when they call an, an office expecting nothing to happen, then all of a sudden something changes. That's a really rewarding experience. We had a number of projects that we, we completed. I, I say we, Dan was the, the lead on all of those things. Um, he, would say, he would say we as well, knowing I, Dan. I know he would. I was his uh, advisor for housing. I worked very closely on the uh, Stytown sale and the negotiation to get 5,000 um, affordable units preserved. Um, worked with him on uh, the East Midtown rezoning and getting more trains through Grand Central with this rezoning. Uh, it's you know moving on to its next steps uh, with the JP Morgan thing. And then more on like a CBA level, we, we passed the Park Avenue Historic District to, to expand the, that historic preservation from 91st Street down to 79th Street along Park Avenue, you know, the jewel of, of the Upper East Side. Um, that was a really rewarding thing. Uh, the Second Avenue subway we finished during our time. Uh, just a number of projects that were, were very difficult, but, you know, because we, we approached them with a with a hardworking ingenuity that that Dan really just you know leads with you know we were able to accomplish. What about District Eight in your eyes is unique? It is an incredible neighbor neighborhood. It has its you know world class institutions like the Met and the Park Avenue Armory and Museum Mile. It uh, has unique in New York that it has a tram, which is pretty incredible going to Roosevelt Island. Yeah. Everyone should take a journey on it. It's a pretty spectacular treasure in New York. But really the people uh, and the community. I, I grew to appreciate the people in the community here more than I ever thought I would. Uh, the, the realization at one point that uh, I was concerned for uh, board members when they uh, told me that their uh, loved one was was ill. The first thing I thought was, oh man, I need to bake a casserole because that's the Texas thing to do, but right. I don't know how to bake a casserole. <laughs> so quick realization, the heart was in the place though. It, it realized that this was my community in a surprising way. I think too, when people think about our community, District 8, they have sort of this idea of the Upper East Side and they have a certain image in their mind when in fact it's the image and the reality are different, aren't they, when it comes to the Upper East Side Community Board 8? Yeah, the, the needs of, of the residents of CB8 are very similar to the needs of any other place in New York. We have a very senior heavy population who have accessibility and mobility issues who need help and advocacy to, to get better subways and better buses to, to get around the stores on the Upper East Side are seeing, you know, the same vacancies and struggling with rent. Uh, we, we, in Dan's office, uh, passed the, the commercial rent tax uh, reform. So hopefully they're, you know, that's the first step. But, you know, the, the small businesses in our neighborhood need help. A lot of help that could be given to um, our, our seniors in, in food assistance and, and getting them on scree and all the city programs that are, are available to them. Those, those are, you know, big issues that we need to tackle. When I think about your time with Councilmember Gorodnik, I see you as very high profile. You were in the community, you were out and about. You were in. You were the voice of Councilmember Gorodnik at so many countless meetings and in so many community organization events. Mm -hmm. um, you worked for a council member who, as you've mentioned, tackled so many difficult and important issues. I would think that with that experience, you could do just about anything you wanted to do as your next chapter professionally. 
and yet you chose to, to come to us and, and we're grateful to you for it. Why? As I kind of mentioned, the, the community itself is one that, that I have come to love. And uh, I really believe in government. I believe in the impactful nature that, that government can have on people's lives. And especially at the local level. Uh, the local level is where the average New Yorker, the average American engages their, their local government, their, their government at all. Uh, through the streets that they, they navigate, through the buses they take. Uh, th that's where change can happen. And so I just want to be a part of that change. And I, I love the community. I love being here still. Good. So until you want to kick me out, I, I think you're stuck with me. <laughs> well, uh, and you're stuck with us then, too. <laughs> we're, um, and we're lucky to, to be stuck with you. This is an exciting time. Uh, we have a lot of change. We have a new board chair, Alita Camp. We have new, a new district manager, you. We also have new staff. In fact, I think we have entirely, entirely new staff. New staff yeah. can, you, can you tell us a little bit about who we've got and what they do and what they bring to the team? Yeah, yeah. So through happenstance, uh, everyone who had been on the board staff previously had, had retired and transitioned out of the office uh, at the same time. So it uh, allowed us to build a really great team. Um, starting with an assistant district manager who uh, had previously served with me at Dan Gerodnik's office, Grace Phillip. She was his liaison to CB6, so she was very familiar with the east side of Manhattan and with uh, how community boards operate, so she's a great resource. And just this week, we got uh, a new community assistant, Lauren, who uh, comes to us from time at Charlie Rangel's office and Jacob Reese Settlement, and is just a very thoughtful and, and great person. And so we're looking forward to like serving the board and serving the community as best we can. And we've got this new chair, Alita Camp. We've got a new district manager. For the sake of our viewers, can you help explain your respective roles? You as district manager, Alita Camp as chair, and how are the roles different? How do you work together? Of course, the chair of the board is similar to the speaker of the city council or uh, any other legislative body is, is elected by her peers um, to serve as the primary spokesperson and uh, agenda setter uh, for the board. Um, myself, I am the, the lead of the office side of the, the board office um, to support her and to support all of the board members and the co-chairs of all the committees. Um, she she and I work very closely together. She's been really great. I, I have to tell you, um, she has made things so much easier than they could have been. Um, she's been really great to work with, and I know the board is in great hands and is going in a great direction with her. It's probably early to ask this and unfair to ask it in front of cameras, but <laughs> are you enjoying the job? I am. I am. Yeah. Not that I could tell you right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I am. No, it's good. It's uh, it's challenging in in many ways. Never realized how short February was oh, uh, yeah. when you have a month uh, to do everything. Every month it has a regimented yeah. schedule. Um, even three days is a very big difference. But yeah, the, the challenges are there, but I'm still really enjoying it. I'm, I'm glad. I'm not surprised. I mean, you seem very enthused. You seem to be enjoying what you're doing. You're very engaged. I imagine the job is, is in some ways very different from what you've done before. And yet I would think builds on the strengths and experiences from your prior work. It certainly does. The changes are, are more in structure almost, as opposed to still constantly being an advocate for the community. That is you know, my passion, and that is what I enjoy doing every day, uh, having the chance to, to advocate for a community that, that needs uh, advocacy on times. Um, but it, it is a change in the way that I am now um, leading a staff, which is a, a new thing for me. Uh, but luckily, I have a great team. and. Um, yeah, sorting yeah. out the the new administrative duties. There's no handbook, so we're, right. we're figuring it out as we go. Yeah. The size of the district now that you work for and represent is, is bigger, I suppose, or at least different geographically. It includes the district that you worked with as for Dan, Dan Garodnik, mm -hmm. but it also is a, an additional piece of the Upper East Side. What is your sense as to the key issues, or at least what are issues are nearest and dearest to your heart in our in our district? Yeah, well, luckily, uh, Councilmember Kalos would also claim me as a, a non-paid staff for all the times that I attended meetings in his district yeah. that um, that weren't about District Four, but were about District Five. But um, 
I, so I've, I've been able to be around the, the issues of, of both District 5 and District 4, uh, which, you know, the, they don't see a line in between. The, the Upper East Side is very, you know, uh, the problem for, of the MTS is a problem for Fifth Avenue, yeah. for, for uh, York Avenue, too. Um, transportation and the ability to age in place is certainly a uh, key issue for, for both sides of the Upper East Side. The ability to... Uh, Get into accessible subways, get get buses that keep getting cut by the MTA. Um, so advocating for those, uh, getting open space. Uh, the the east side of Manhattan in general just doesn't have the amount of op open space that other parts of Manhattan have, and other parts of the city for sure have. Uh, so constantly advocating for for open space, getting funding for the Esplanade, getting uh, the the bubble at, at Queensboro Oval, uh, turning that into a park, uh, finding park space anywhere they can to get open space. Those are key issues that, that really cross both lines. So. When you think about your near and long-term goals as district manager, what comes to mind? Because we, we have the, lost a lot of the institutional knowledge of the, the board office, I'm setting up meetings with all of the committee co-chairs to go over what their committees do, because each committee is run differently than, than the next. They require different materials for their meetings. They require different uh, back-end uh, setups. So, so we're meeting with all of the, the committee co-chairs, trying to get a good understanding of what it is that the board office can be doing to serve them best. Um, in the medium term, I've set like a one-year goal of digitizing our office. Uh, right now, it's a very small office with 25 filing cabinets that have a wealth of, of information, but it's not accessible in any way. Uh, so digitizing these, organizing the office to a way that every board member and members of the community can use our, our institutional knowledge and the resources we have in a more efficient way. And then long term, I see the uh, the position and the role as making the community board more accessible for the community. Many people don't know that we we even exist, um, but we need to make sure that we meet them where they are on social media and and out in the in the community. Make sure that the board office is seen as a resource that they can call us uh, for their pothole concerns or whatever it is, the, their evictions that, that they may be facing, that, that we are a resource for them so that they can get through the city bureaucracy in an efficient manner. That's the long-term goal, improve the visibility of the board and, and, and continue to serve in more dynamic ways. Does anyone ever say to you, what is a community board? Constantly. I imagine yeah. that, because I get asked that as well. And defining that for people to remind them we are advisory, but having been on the other side of it, having known the, the council's uh, and the elected officials' reliance on the community board as a effective uh, gauge of where an issue lands in their community, it's so impactful. It's so helpful for the legislators, for the city to have this resource where they can turn open a public forum on a t particular topic and get real feedback, almost in real time, of yeah. what this issue means to the community. That, that is great to hear. It, it just occurred to me that your perspective of having worked for Councilmember Gorodnik all those years allowed you, I would think, to see what impact, if any, the board had on the legislative process, on the work of various agencies. And so to hear you describe us having an impact, um, it's nice to hear. And it's also must be good for you because you're going to be a part of that impact. Yeah, it's about maintaining relationships and improving those relationships. It's about having thoughtful feedback every chance we can. Being in the room, so much of life is just showing up. And having those regular, regularly scheduled meetings is so impactful for, for the community. So they know they can come to the transportation committee to t talk about their bus problems. So they can uh, show up at the, at the landmarks committee to talk about a landmark building. It's a very helpful, uh, uh, underutilized tool by many New Yorkers. So I always encourage them to check out our website, CB8M, sign up for our uh, uh, updates, and, and just call our office anytime there are problems that they see. And of course, these meetings are open to the public. We encourage people to attend. Uh, if, if someone said to you, well, Will, I might, this sounds great, how do I get involved? What, what's the answer? 
The answer is first, check our website, see when we're coming, when we're meeting, okay. uh, find the issues that you're you're passionate about, and come to those meetings. Um, you can uh, really have a chance to raise an issue or uh, have your voice heard on any particular issue that is before the board. Um, and if you enjoy that, you know you can. There, you have several options. You could join uh, a committee as a public member. A public member gives the chance to vote on the issues before that committee and have your voice heard in an even more uh, prominent way. And then if you really enjoy that and you wanna join other committees, you uh, can apply through the borough president's office to be a full board member, uh, just like yourself, and you can uh, join the committees that you're, you're interested in and advocate for, for the, the topics that you're, you're passionate about by being a part of the board. How do you, during the month in between the meetings of the board, how do you interact with the city agencies and the elected officials in your role as district manager? Figuring that out, but uh, constantly, it seems. Um, we both advocate for the community at any point where uh, maybe an agency is being unresponsive or appears to be unresponsive, uh, so we can reach out to them constantly to get feedback on, on their three-on-one complaints um, and, and other concerns. Uh, I am constantly talking to the agencies uh, to discuss agenda items for different committees, um, get things squared away with resolutions that have been sent to them, follow up on those resolutions, um, remind them that we exist sometimes. Right. Uh, but yeah, we're constantly, like I said, maintaining those relationships because when we have strong relationships with our agency partners, I feel like we're going to be best suited to advocate for the issues we are concerned about and impact change. That's great. Other than your work with the board, what about life outside of Community Board 8? What do what you do, do for do? fun? What are your hobbies? I'm a sports fan. I uh, have been for a long time, mostly basketball and soccer, uh, which is strange for Texas. but. Um, I grew up a big Dallas Mavericks fan. I like playing basketball and playing soccer. I like to travel. Uh, my partner and I love uh, seeing new places. I, I'm a history nerd, so I, I read a lot and love visiting uh, historical places. I, I did a pilgrimage across Spain uh, that I'd love to, to repeat something similar to that. Um, I have two cats that are oh, yeah? wonderful. The, uh, so if you ever need to send me uh, tweets of, of cats, I, I will never turn it down. <laughs> Good. Any surprises? Has it been exactly what you expected it to be? Every day is a little different. Okay. Um, it has... It has come with its unique challenges, but also has been really rewarding in a lot of ways, too. Um, I didn't expect my job would be so involved with scheduling. Um, and yeah. scheduling is, uh, we had an incredible scheduler at Dan's office who <laughs> yeah. made it look easy, but it is not quite that easy. <laughs> Finding venues is, is always a difficult task for the board, for community boards in general, right. what I understand from the rest of my uh, colleagues as district managers. It's a struggle to find space for these public venues. Um, the I've, I've really enjoyed working with the board and the board members. Um, they all come with their own uh, unique perspectives on, on life and on New York City. And I've learned a lot from each of them over the last four years and even over the last two months, uh, how to you know advocate for their community, how to, to show the, the city and, and their, their fellow New Yorkers the importance of their community and the importance of the issues that are currently challenging their community. So navigating that is, uh, and the things I've learned from them is great. Will, you have been involved in city life in, as a resident, as a senior advisor to Councilmember Gorodnik, and now as district manager. If I could take all that experience and also give you a wand, and say, Will, you can change anything about this great city of ours. What would you change? Could I ask for more wishes? <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you three. Okay. I would make the MTA both accessible um, for, for people with disabilities. Right on. And expand it to neighborhoods that need it. Finish the uh, Second Avenue subway. I would 
I would dare I say boldly, move the Second Avenue uh, subway when it turns onto 125th Street, make it go all the way out west so it connects the west side to the east side in northern Manhattan. But I would also expand the, the, the subway to where it reaches neighborhoods that need the accessibility and, and meet that, uh, that need that the city has to get around and have affordable places to live. I would magically fix our rent laws um, that would make it harder for predatory landlords to run out rent-stabilized tenants, um, make it harder for them to harass them with construction and what have you to get them to leave, ensure our rent laws are strong. Um, and, you know, I think one of the great ideas that I heard uh, our mayor speak about at his last town hall in uh, Councilmember Kalos's district was uh, the idea of disincentivizing uh, retail being laid over and vacant, uh, where many landlords are allowing their retail spaces to remain empty, waiting on those banks, waiting on those uh, chain stores and the um, Dwayne Reed's or what have you, that they leave their, their spaces empty. And that's uh, a blight on our, our, our neighborhoods and, and is, uh, he was talking about ideas of, of disincentivizing that sort of vacancy uh, through um, what's some sort of, of, of fee or fine. Um, I, I liked that idea. So helping our small businesses, expanding access to the subway and, and protecting our, our rent stabilized tenants and, and, ex and uh, from predatory landlords. Do you think the community board can assist in any or all of those areas? They definitely can. That's yeah, that's I for do, sure. I do too. I do um, too. Through various uh, number of ways, they can be advocating for better transportation, for accessible transportation. They can uh, support legislation that is before the council or before the uh, the legislature in Albany. Uh, advocate for for positions of of our small businesses and for our our rent stabilized rent rent control, uh, rent protected tenants. We don't have a magic wand, but we do have a community board and we have elected officials yeah. and we're fortunate to have you and uh, our new chair and a lot of eager board members. And, and every one of those issues is important and all of them to one extent or another, I think we are focused on and, 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 and should renew our focus on because they are each one of them very important. I would agree. Well, there you have it. That uh, was Will Brightbill. Um, you, I think you got a chance today on this show to get at least a sense of the many different talents and experiences that Will brings to his work as district manager. And beyond that, the enthusiasm that he brings to the work and the passion he brings to public service. And so I, I, I must tell you, I'm more grateful than ever that we have Will as our district manager. I am more committed than ever to supporting his work. And, uh, I'm truly grateful to you for being our district manager. And uh, I'm sure everyone here watching this show is thinking how fortunate we are to have you, how challenging your work is. These, none of these issues we discussed today are easy or simple. Mm. Many of them are persistent and profound. But with the energy that you bring to this work and, and hopefully the energy that the board has collectively, I, there's no reason we can't take on all of these issues and more. So thank you again for being on the show and thank you viewers for joining us today on this episode of CB8 Speaks.